Okay, so here's another related rates problem. Let's say we have a conical tank and we want to fill this tank with water. So bear with me for one second here. Like that. So this is our tank and what we're doing is we're taking water and we're just going to pump it in here. Yeah. Water. Alright, so uh, what we want to do is we want to find uh, is how fast is the water level rising as we pour more water in here. So let's just draw that in. You know, so there we got some water in the tank. All right, so some information, I guess, is what we need. Let's say that, um, let's say that the height of the tank from here to the bottom is 12 meters. And let's say that. Um, Let's say that the, the radius from here to here at the top is 6 meters. 6 meters. So now if we just write the equation uh, or the volume, the equation for the volume of cone, I'll just write it up here. Uh, we know that the volume is equal to pi r squared times the height all over 3. Now the problem here is we need to differentiate this um, so we can find the rates of changes in these different things. But um, the the problem is that we have two variables here. We have the radius and we have the height. Uh, and so and we also have the volume, I guess. We have three. So but we want to knock this down to two variables. So we need to somehow relate two of these to each other. Um, but this in this case it's actually really easy. Uh, we see that the height is 12 and uh, radius is 6. So we know that um, the radius is just half the height. It's quite simple. So if we just write this here, radius is equal to 1 half h, 1 half the height. Uh, now we can substitute this in and uh, it'll look slightly different. So now the, uh, the equation becomes v is equal to pi and we substitute this in for r. So one half height, one half height squared uh, times h again, and this is all again over three. So there we go. Now we've got this down. There's only two variables, and when we differentiate this, this should be no problem. But before we go on, let's just rearrange this again. Uh, we'll just put the h terms together and put all the constants together, and let's clear this up a bit. Uh, this can be rewritten as um, right here. Let's keep going over to the right. Uh, this can also be written as v is equal to, uh, if you want to think of it this way, one third times pi. There we have our constants almost out together. Uh, times again one half h squared times h. And lastly, we can just rearrange this to be the volume is equal to uh, pi times h cubed over 12. All right, so there we go. That is a little bit easier to work with um, for when we differentiate. So let's come down here and let's differentiate um, the equation. So we get, with respect to time, so we get dv dt, and this is going to be equal to uh, 1 fourth times pi, uh, h squared times dh dt. And if you didn't catch how that happened, uh, when you come up here, you bring the uh, you bring a 3 down here, and this becomes a 3h squared, and then the 3 cancels out with a 12 to get 1 fourth. And then the pi also just remains in place, and then we multiply by the dh dt. All right, so this is the formula that we are going to be using in order to find the change in depth. But I guess before we do anything, we need uh, the amount of water that's actually being pumped in. So let's just say, uh, I forgot to write that down before, uh, let's say this is 4 uh, meters cubed per minute. right? Um, so that 4 meters cubed per minute is the rate of change in the volume. So that's this dv dt. So if we want to solve for, say, uh, let's find the rate of change in the water level, the height of the water level when the, let's say when the depth is one meter. 
nice easy one to start off with. So the change in volume is going to be 4, and this is going to be equal to 1 fourth times pi, and now the height we chose to be 1 meter, so this will be 1 squared times dh dt. And remember, dh dt is the rate of change in the height of the water, or the depth of the water, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to rearrange to solve for dh dt. Uh, we will have right here dh, not d11, dh dt is going to be equal to 4 over 1 fourth pi. And the 1 squared is just 1. That doesn't really get involved. And we can rearrange this to uh, bring this, flip this fraction around, and we'll get 16 over pi uh, meters per minute. So there you go. That's the rate of change in the depth when the depth is equal to 1 meter. Now let's do another one. Let's do a couple more. Uh, let's say we want, um, let's say we want this uh, when the depth is equal to 2 meters. Let's go up another notch. So this is at uh, depth is equal to 2, or height is equal to 2. So again, uh, dv dt, it's always going to be equal to 4 with this question because we're pumping in 4 meters cubed per minute. Again, we'll put this 1 over 4 times pi um, times now our h squared, which is now 2 times 2 squared times dh dt. Right, and now 2 squared is 4, 4 divided by 4, these are going to cancel out and we can rearrange and we'll find that dh dt is going to be equal to 4 over pi meters per minute. Again, there you go. So now you can see that as we're pouring more water in here, the rate that the water level is increasing, the height of the water level is actually slowing down because you have to account for more water you know, going in the sides that weren't down here. So we can do one more if we want. Uh, let's find out what um, we have one, two. Let's find out what the rate of change is when we're at three meters. So we'll switch colors. We'll do one last one. Uh, dv dt, same thing. It's always going to be four in this case because that's the input. Uh, four is equal to one fourth pi times, now it's going to be 3 squared times dh or dt. And when we rearrange for dh dt, um, we will get oops, dh dt is going to be equal to 4 over, uh, let's see, one-fourth pi times nine. And this can be rearranged to be 16 over nine pi meters per minute. 